All right, so for this game, it looks like we have what is kind of both a sequencing and a grouping game, mostly a grouping game, but it has a sequential aspect to it. But regardless, the, uh, the setup is pretty straightforward. We have these three aisles um, and they're just labeled conveniently one, two, and three. Um, and for the record, they also clarify which ones are considered lowest and highest. So the one is the low side of things. And from there, I suppose we just have the elements. We have F, H, M, P, R, and S. Now, I suppose one thing that's always worth noting is just in terms of kind of minimum spacing requirements. And we know that the different sections, I mean, they're just gonna go once, which is pretty standard, um, but every single aisle does have to have something there. So we'll, we'll take note of the fact that there's a minimum of one each. So as of right now, we essentially have three spots kind of reserved and we have three extra spaces that are gonna bounce around. So from there, let's take a look at the rules. So the first rule says that R has to be either with F or M. So I guess we can say something like either we're gonna have an RF block or we're gonna have to have an RM block. And okay, yeah. Next, we are told that F has to be in a lower number than both M and P. So I guess we can say that F is before both M and P. Next, we're told that S is in a lower number than P. So we already have a P on the board, so let's interconnect these together. Actually, before we keep going, so it's worth noting, um, we've got F and M kind of in play here, and we know that R is gonna just buddy up with one of these two, but I guess that doesn't really tell us tell us too much right now. It's still kind of open. Anyways, let's keep going. S cannot be lower than H. Now you'll notice that the wording with this rule is very kind of particular. It doesn't say that S has to be higher than H, and there's a reason for that. Um, rather, it just says that S cannot be in a lower numbered aisle. And anytime you have kind of a curiously worded rule, you always want to kind of start thinking about what could they be kind of doing here? What are they trying to screw with? Um, and the possibility that you want to be conscious of here is that they could arguably be in the same aisle um, S just cannot be lower. So in terms of symbolization, we can just say something like S before H, this simply cannot happen, which as we said, it means that either they are in the same aisle or S is going to have to be in a higher aisle. Although we do have S in play already, S has to go before P. So I suppose as far as S is concerned, S is either going to go into one or two. It certainly can't go into the third aisle because again, it has to be lower than P. And well, okay, so if S is in aisle number one, then that means that H would have to be with him because H can't be in a higher aisle. And if S is in aisle number two, then H could potentially go into one or two. It just can't go into three. Um, but then P would have to go into three. So that's something. You know what? Let's um, let's exhaust this. We only have two major plays for the S. And depending on what you do with the S, it's going to have implications. So that's not a bad avenue for exhaustion. So we can say either the S is going to go here or the S is going to go there. Now, again, in template number one, S can't be lower than H. So S is going to have to be with H over here. In template number two, H is a little bit flexible, but since S has to go before P, P is going to have to go into the third group. In fact, let's just label these templates. We have template A, template B. Now from there, is there anything else that we can do? Um, I suppose there isn't too much. I mean, we know that F has to go before M before P, but that's still flexible, it seems like, in both of these, right? Because we could have F over here before M, who's gonna go somewhere there, or F could even go here with M over there, um, and then H could go into number one. It's actually worth noting, I suppose, that somebody still has to go into number one. But again, we have we have maneuverability. R has to, again, buddy up with F or M, but that doesn't really say too much. So you know what, I guess, let's, uh, let's keep going. I suppose what we could also do is, this rule's a bit kind of tough to wrap your head around sometimes, so it might not be a bad idea in the second scenario to clarify exactly what's gonna happen. And what's going to happen is that H is going to have to go either in one or two. We're just not 100%. It just cannot go into three. You could have also, I suppose, symbolized it as H cannot go here. Um, but yeah, from there, let's take a look at the 
questions. Now, it looks like we don't have an exclusion question here. Uh, we just go straight into a local question. But regardless of everything, remember, you always do the first question first, because even if it's not an explicit exclusion question, it usually still plays the same kind of role. So the question asks, if aisle one has only hobbies, well, wait a minute. If aisle one only has hobbies, and that's a very, very specific restriction, that means that um, we cannot be working in template A because aisle one is not only an H. So if we only have an H in aisle one, we'll have to be in template B. Um, so H will go here and it will be alone. S will go here in aisle two, P will go here in aisle three. And well, wait a minute, if aisle one is done, that means that F before M and P, F would have to go into two, and then M would have to go into three. And that just leaves us with R. And I suppose R can shuffle, right? F just has, R has to go with one of F or M. So let's go. The question asks, what could happen? Answer choice A, F is in three, and that's definitely not gonna happen. M is in two, nope. Um, P is in two, nope. Uh, R is in three, and maybe we did say R could bounce between two and three, so that could be the case. Just in case though, S is in three and definitely not. Best answer choice is answer choice D for question number 13. Next, question number 14 is local. Let's take a look. We've got if IL3 only has puzzles. So again, these kind of rules are great because, I mean, if we're locking out the third group just to P, that's going to do a lot of damage since nothing else can go there. Now, at the moment, it's worth noting that's still consistent with both of these templates. So that could still go either way. Um, but I mean, for one, if P is the only one that's in three, that means that F before M is going to force F and M into one and two respectively. Now, S and H, they feel, this feels like they could still kind of bounce around. And again, we said that both templates A and B are still functional. R is going to go with one of F or M. So you know what? I don't think we know much more. What's the question? The question asks what must be true. Answer choice A, F is in one. <laughs> there it is. Um, F does have to go into number one. The best answer to question number 14 is A. Just in case, though, let's take a look at the rest. Answer choice B, H is in one. Now, it could have been, but it doesn't have to be. We didn't lock the H. We could have had, for example, S and H both go into number two just as easily. Answer choice C, M is in one, and that's just false. Answer choice D, R is in one. Now, R could go into one, but it could also go with M into two. R is flexible like that, so that doesn't have to be true. And lastly, S is in two. And again, it could have been, but it doesn't have to. In fact, we could have had S and H both in one. So the best answer to question number 14, once again, is A. Next, question number 15. If each aisle has exactly two sections. Okay, so we have the exact spacing. One, two, one, two, one, two. Now, in terms of our templates, it looks like that's actually, that's still consistent with both templates A and B. Obviously here this would lock and then whoever will go into two and three. But here, I mean, it seems like we could do sets of two in each. Is there anything else we can do here? Well, I suppose, okay, well, one thing that we definitely know for sure is that R and whoever is going to take up one of those two-person blocks. We don't exactly know who R is going to be with, but it's basically going to be an R with F or M. That's going to be one of your three groups. Can we do, ooh, okay, so wait a minute. So if that's gonna knock out one of your groups, then we only have two other groups to work with, but S and P, they can't be together. So they're going to go into, since this group is done, there's gonna be two other groups, one of which will have an S and the other of which will have a P. We don't exactly know who's who, but we can kind of say that what's gonna happen here is we're gonna have S with someone, that's gonna be one group, before P with someone. Again, we just don't know who with. Now, from there, oh, hang on, wait a minute. So this block is done. So the only variability here are these two, and we know that this block is gonna go before this block, but H, H, I mean, obviously can't go with the R, but it also can't go with the P, because if you put it in with this block, then you're going to get S before H, and we're not supposed to have S before H. 
So H effectively is going to have to go with the S, and then P is going to just go with the other of F or M. So um, we'll have an FM split. In fact, actually, we can... Actually, no, that could still go either way. So we could have... Um, if this is P with F, then that would go before R with M, but it could also be R with F, and then this could be P with M. So anyways, we have a little bit of flexibility, but that's that's pretty good. We can do a lot of damage off board. So the question now asks, let's take a look, science must be with who? And there it is. We've already answered the question. Science would have to go with H. The best answer here is answer choice B for question 15. Next, 16 is global. We'll come back to this one in a second. Let's take a look at 17. So if IL-2 only has science, so first of all, that would obviously lock us into template B because template A, science, is elsewhere. Um, but that's a pretty heavy rule. If IL-2 only has science, that means that it has nothing else. Um, so that means that, well, I mean, we know that S is before P, so P is for sure in 3. Moreover, S can't go before H, so since S can't also go with H, so H is going to have to go into number one here. Oh, and we know F before M, so that means that F is going to have to go into one, and M is going to have to go into three, since neither can go into two. And then we just have R, and we don't really know what happens with R, do we? Um, it can go with F, it can go with M, we still have flexibility. So the question now asks, must be true except, so what doesn't have to be true? Answer choice A, F is in one, and... That does have to be true, so we can get rid of A. Answer choice B, H is in 1, that has to be true. Answer choice C, M is in 3, that has to be true. Next, P is in 3, that has to be true. Answer choice E, R is in 1, and that could be true, but it doesn't have to be true. So that is our must be true, except best answer to 17 is E. Lastly, question number 16. Let's take a look. Which of the following cannot be the list of sections in aisle two? So we're looking for a set of things that cannot go into two. Answer choice A, H and M. Could that be the list? Now, to be clear, when it's asking you for the list, it's not asking you for just some people that can go into two. It's asking for what could be the complete the list of sections that are in aisle two. So could H and M be the complete set of people that go into aisle two. And actually, no, that uh, we can kind of pick that up from the get-go, because if you look at our two templates here, you'll notice that in template A, H is already in one, so H and M are not going to go into two. But in template B, we have an S here, which means that H and M are not going to be the complete list of sections that are in aisle two. There is never a scenario where H and M are the complete set for aisle two. So the best answer to question number 16 is A. Just in case, though, let's take a look at the rest. Um, can we just have M and R in aisle two? And in the top template, I suppose maybe if you put M and R here, that would take care of this rule over here, and then F would go into one, and I suppose P could go into three. That would seemingly work. Answer choice C. Can we have just M and S there? And in the second template, maybe if you have S with M over here, I suppose you could have H here with F and R, and that would take care of this rule, and I think everything else is good, so that could work. Answer choice D, can we have H, M, S, all three of them? And again, why not? If you did S, M, and H over here, then R with F would go into a number one, and that seems completely viable. Answer choice E, could we do M, R, S there? And same scenario, if we did S, M, and R over here, that would take care of the R, M block right away. And then H and F could go into one, and we're good. So once again, the best answer here is answer choice A for question number 16.